worked, we worked our butt off to get here. Um, you know, even though it's a blessing and a, and a dream come true, we truly worked our, our butt off to get here, especially for being in Minnesota where a lot of people sleep on it. He's able to pull it down. Washington pounded down by Kamal Martin. Kamal Martin's played a whale of a game. Bathroom to pass, blitz comes, throws it, and it's intercepted! Kamal Martin! Under pressure and down he goes. Kamal Martin on a linebacker blitz made him pay. And it's a three and out start for the Minnesota linebacker Kamal Martin is very good at coming downhill. He explodes towards the full. The only issue is he's a tad undersized. Played at about 235 last year for the Gophers, and that could be issue at the next level. No doubt he has a nose for the ball, and don't be fooled by that size. He's still a tackling machine. That said, he looks a little stiff from time to time when changing directions, and while he can drop, drop into zone coverages, he's not comfortable doing it time and time again. He did miss the end of the Gopher season with an injury and didn't compete in Indianapolis at the Combine, but he should be ready to go once the NFL draft rolls around. Brandon, what do you think you have in Kamal, and how much were you able to see from him before he suffered that knee injury that caused him to miss a couple games last season? Uh, well, with Kamal, I think the first thing you notice is his toughness uh, and his versatility. He's a guy who played soundbacker, and then he moved inside his senior year. Um, I think he offers a lot of versatility, some toughness as he played through that knee injury at some point of the season late last year before he shut it down. But I think his toughness and versatility stand out the most. Hey, Brandon, do you, do you see him playing inside linebacker for you guys? And is he just a first, second down guy, or can he play in soft? Uh, that'll be up to the coaches at that point. Um, I think he's just a football player. I think he, he's smart, he's tough, and – He's going to make plays when presented with the opportunity. How much he plays will be up to him and the coaches. Hi, Brent. I was curious what 40 time you had on Kamal, and, and just as far as the strength of his game, is he a, a guy that you, you, you feel could really help the run defense? Can he cover? What can he do from, from that standpoint? He can do a little bit of everything. Um, I have no issues with him in the run no pass game. Um, in his 40s, he's Top four, five, low four, six guy. Hey, Brandon. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about uh, maybe Martin's skills uh, outside the box, uh, you know, his range and that sort of thing? Yeah. Uh, he's a guy who can cover tight ends down the field. He has some length and size for him, you know, that allows him to be more physical with those bigger tight ends who like to stretch the team. I think He's going to be a guy who, you know, who will give you a, another versatile piece when dealing with those bigger, faster tight ends because his ability to run downfield and play out of space and cover, cover backs and tight ends. Uh, yeah, Brandon, just wondering if uh, Kamal played much special teams in college and whether yes or no, do you think he could uh, bring something to the special teams units in Green Bay? He did play first teams in college um, his first couple of years, and he already knows that first teams is going to be a big part of his game to make this team and help this team win. So uh, he's a guy who can do it and who wants to do it. Hey, Brandon, this is the first guy that this threat that you drafted without any you know, times as far as four days or, or combines. I know it's not an unusual thing in this draft, but how did you guys go about working around the absence of that data? Uh, just constant communication um, with guys in the office and with the area scouts. Uh, those guys, you know, Goody, John Eric, Bowles, you know, those guys did a great job of just keeping us in the loop and, and keeping, oh, the keeping the okay. community. 
the communication lines wide open for us so that we're able to communicate clearly on what we see and what we think this guy can help us do eventually. But the biggest yeah. part was just, I mean, it was, it was wide open communication. I know he missed several games with the injury, with the knee injury last season. How is he just in terms of health at this point in terms of and readiness for whenever y'all do with him? Um, well, uh, if duty took him, that means he's ready to go. Um, you know, our staff and duty do a good job of making sure those guys are are healthy and ready to perform whenever they do return to football. Um, but I I have no problems with his health and and the way we took him, I don't think the head man does either. Brandon, was there a spot in last season where you guys were able to kind of notice when you felt like the injury might have happened, a uh, point in the season where, okay, he's moving like this, and then there's another point in the season where it's clear he's playing through something? Uh, he was playing through something all year for the most part. Um, I think it was it was a two- or three-game stretch where he did look healthier, but it wasn't by much. He was still – might have through some things, um, but it was it was t- hard to tell just on tape what games he was really healthy and which ones he wasn't. Six foot three, 240 pounds. Very aware, very instinctive. He has excellent size, excellent length. He can really run. Pretty good at finding the football. In today's game, the ideal inside linebacker has enough hammer in him to play the run and enough hybrid in him to play the pass. And that brings us to Kamal Martin. His dimensions, 6'3", 240, say big and physical. And more importantly, his tape says he can and will hammer the run. Is it gonna get there? It's Kamal Martin. However, Martin was a quarterback and safety in high school. He looks comfortable in space and has enough hybrid in him to cover effectively. Pass is picked off. And Minnesota forces the turnover. As a matter of fact, even when it comes to defeating blockers, Martin uses his athleticism to avoid them. Bottom line, Martin is a player with lots of possibilities, who's barely scratched the surface of his potential at inside linebacker. He actually played a lot on the edge at Minnesota, but regardless of where he lined up, there is a constant in Martin's game. He hunts the ball and he shows up. Martin's one of those guys who takes it personal, like it's on him to make the play every play. Perfect example, here's Kamal. Ball goes away and look who shows up on the other sideline to tomahawk it loose. Kamal Martin, a fifth rounder oozing with potential. 
he has excellent size. He has excellent length. Uh, he can really run. Um, you know, in 2018, I thought, you know, there were some dynamic moments on tape and you really started to see him develop. Struggled through with some injuries this year, but I think once he starts to get back healthy, which he is now, you'll really start to see that 2018 where he was headed. Yeah, we're excited about him. Interception by Kamal Martin. Hey, Kamal, what can you tell us about the knee and where you are physically and do you feel that you're 100% physically right now? Uh, yeah, the knee, the knee's feeling really good. Um, you know, just coming back and rehabbing and, you know, way ahead of where I'm supposed to be. And, um, you know, I'm going to be completely fine, 100% fine. And, uh, yeah, it's not going to be a big deal at all. What do you consider your strengths as a player that you can contribute to Green Bay this season or in the future? What do you consider your biggest, what, biggest strength? Yeah, so, I, I mean, I would consider my biggest strength as, uh, you know, being able to combine my athletic ability with, you know, how well I know the defensive side of this game, um, you know, just being able to use my length and my range and speed and tracking down ball carriers and, you know, just being prepared when it comes to, you know, Sunday. So I, I feel like that's going to be, you know, where I succeed the most. Um, can you talk about the, the, the path that you took from – High school quarterback. I think you're gonna actually go play college quarterback, and you became an edge rusher, then the linebacker. It's quite quite the path. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, played played high school quarterback. I was actually committed to Eastern Michigan, and uh, ended up you know camping one last time at Minnesota, and uh, ended up getting that offer there at that camp, and came in there as a linebacker, and uh, had a pretty good training camp as as a linebacker slash edge rusher, and um, Ended up playing Sam that year and, and outside linebacker and, you know, moved my way up to inside linebacker, you know, the past couple of years. And, you know, it's been a blessing and uh, truly off, truly happy to, you know, have the opportunity to play all of, all those different positions. So, uh, Kamal, as a, as a Burnsville guy, I take it Minnesota is where you really wanted to go. Like you, you just were hoping – somehow to get an offer from them before you had to make a final decision? Um, so, yeah, yeah, Minnesota was always, you know, the the Gophers, the Gophers, I should say, was always the, the dream school going up just because, you know, I had so many uh, guys that, that played there that, you know, I trained with growing up and looked up to and, and ended up getting that offer, and, you know, it was, it was awesome to play there for Coach Fleck and Coach Play, so. Hi, Kamal. Why do you think you took the linebacker so well? And what is the best position you like? And, and just when, when you were first introduced, why do you think you took to it as well as you did? I, I think it's just because I was, able to, I was able to use my athletic ability and, um, you know, my range and my length and, and be able to just run around and, and uh, make plays. And, uh, you know, I kind of I took it to heart and, you know, I truly – you know, invested my time in, into that linebacker role. And, uh, you know, I was invested in it, and, you know, I worked hard at it and definitely paid off. So glad it happened. How do you know A.J. Dillon, and what's the relationship there? So, uh, yeah, I know A.J. Dillon and Jordan Love. Uh, we, we all trained together out in uh, Santa Ana this past three, four months. And, uh, you know, they're awesome, awesome guys, you know, just great, genuine people. And, uh, you know, I can't wait to, you know, win, win a lot of games with them here in Green Bay. So we're excited about that. Hey, Kamal, uh, can you just talk about, you know, describe your uh, coverage and drop skills and uh, how you think that uh, will be required uh, at the next level? Yeah, um, you know, like I said, I, I believe I'm a pretty athletic and talented, talented guy when it comes to pass coverage and pass drops and, and whatnot. And um, you know, I think I'll be able to use that to my advantage. Also, you know, in the run game as well. So you know, whatever happens, happens, and and I'm ready to work. And you'll see what happens going forward. Come on, congratulations. How much pride do you take on special teams? How much of a part of your career at Minnesota was that? And do you anticipate uh, doing that a lot in Green Bay? 
Yeah, so I, I played special teams all four years at, at Minnesota, and I took a lot of pride in it just because, you know, some guys get there and, and they think that they don't have to work their way up and they don't have to, you know, play special teams or whatnot. But I kind of took pride in that and got our younger guys rallied up around me to be able to, you know, make it make an emphasis on playing special teams. And, and uh, I'm, I'm happy I did because, you know, I love special teams. I love, you know, making plays on, you know, through all different phases of, of the ball. In special teams, you definitely need that to win games. And um, I think that's going to transition well here in Green Bay, uh, being able to play special teams and, and whatnot. So excited for that. Kamal, congratulations. And as Bill mentioned, you started as a quarterback, but – that describe your game say that you're a physical linebacker, a thumper. So how does that uh, love of hitting people, where does that develop? <laughs> yeah, so uh, started, yeah, started as a quarterback, and uh, I played a little bit of defense my senior year in high school. And, um, you know, always been a fan of the physical side of the football game. I feel like that's one of the reasons why, you know, we fall in love with the game, just because there's nothing like it and there's nothing like that physical side where you Really get to um, you know punish opponents, especially especially in the calls, and, uh, and we we love that up at Minnesota. We love playing in the calls, and you know we did that the past couple of years, and we really took that to our advantage, where we could really let opponents know that we're going to come at you with all we got, especially when it's called up. So. Come on, um, when did you first hurt the knee, and? Um, were you aware that they, at the time that it was hurt, that they want you to have surgery right away and you tried to play through it? And then at the end of the season, what kind you know, what kind of surgery did you have? Um, so I pretty much hurt my knee in the middle of the season and, and uh, again at the end of the season and just went in and had surgery to get it fixed up. But everything's, you know, looking great. Um, you know, gotten amazing reports on it, and, and uh, I'm going to be, I'm pretty much 100%, so it's, it's going to be good. I just wanted to confirm, that Eastern Michigan, did they recruit you? I know you'll play quarterback in high school. Was Eastern Michigan recruiting you as a quarterback before you ended up going to Minnesota? Yes. Yes, yeah, but I was committed as a quarterback. Yeah. Hey, come on, the Packers just drafted um, John Runyon from Minnesota, or from Minnesota, geez, from Michigan. Did you go up against him at all, and your thoughts on him, if you did go up against him? Um, I most likely went up against him my, my sophomore year, but uh, not, not that I know of. I'm obviously a great, great player when we play Michigan, <laughs> as they beat us pretty bad. But other than that, yeah, he has to be a great player. Excited for him to be here as well. Larry McCarron and Wes Hotkowitz with an instant react on the Packers' selection in the fifth round of the NFL draft. They have chosen Kamal Martin, a linebacker from Minnesota. Wes, what do you have on him? You know, this is a really interesting pick, Larry, for a number of different reasons. One, I know there's been a lot of Packer fans that have wanted the Packers to go get another inside linebacker. And certainly that was a position that they needed to address after both Blake Martinez and B.J. Goodson both left during free agency. Certainly Christian Kirksey fits into that puzzle, but also Martin now is a guy that I think could slide into that B.J. Goodson type role and also give them some flexibility on special teams. Six foot three, 240 pounds, a former Mr. Football in the state of Minnesota. Had a really nice career for the Gophers. There was a a knee injury he had this past year that sidelined him. He only played in eight games, but was still downhill and and could get up against the line of scrimmage and really make some plays. My question, Larry, this entire draft process was the Packers knew they needed to get better against the run. Were they going to do it with the defensive tackle or were they going to try to do it with the inside linebacker? Kamal Martin was that guy. Well, you know what, Wes? I think they're going to try to get better against the run by doing it with everybody. It is a team game, especially when it comes to defending the run. couple things about Kamal. He's got long arms and big hands, 34-inch arms, over 10 inches on the hand size. 
He's adept at keeping blockers away from his body. He's pretty good at finding the football. Sometimes you can be good at taking on blockers, but you don't get the football. And that's the, the end game in the whole thing is finding the football. Pretty good at that. Solid tackler. Pretty good zone pass defender. Man, not so much, but pretty good zone pass to defender and certainly a lot of special teams potential. Anything else on Kamal Wes? Well, in the fifth round, Larry, you're looking for traits, right? We always hear that all the time. I think he gives you some things there to like. And from the get-go, he looks like he's going to be able to contribute on special teams. And the thing I like more than anything else is they have options at inside linebacker now. Oren Burks is coming back. If he can stay healthy, he's going to compete for a starting role. Curtis Bolton, you would think, would be you know able to make a return here after that ACL injury that kind of slowed his promise last year after it looked like he might end up being a starter for that defense. And you know, a guy like Ty Summers has a lot of athleticism, a lot of speed for that position. Some guys that I think are all going to mix into that room with Martin among them to, to compete for some playing time and, and roles on this defense. Thank you, Wes. That's instant rehack. Packers have three choices coming up in the sixth round. Hope to see you back here then. It's special. It's really special. Um, I don't see him as a friend. I see him as a brother. And if blood couldn't make us closer, then I don't know what will. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's definitely a brother to me. I call his parents my parents. He calls my parents his parents. And... It's, it's fun. It's something special, something something different that college football could bring you. And it's, it's definitely paid off the last four years. Having somebody like that on your side and, and someone you can feed off and they can feed off you, it's definitely special. And then the Packers also off the board with another player taken, the linebacker Kamal Martin, Daniel. Yeah, Kamal Martin, the first tape I popped on was Purdue. They had two picks in that game, so... You know, he, he's very aware, very instinctive as a zone dropper in coverage here. Uh, he shoots gaps. They, they line him up, just let him shoot gaps and try and penetrate and create negative plays. He does a very nice job with that. But you're drafting him for what he can do, help you in coverage, as well as being able to shoot, cut him loose and let him shoot gaps and make plays. You feel like the front seven's been starting to gel a little bit over the games? Absolutely. You know, we've been coming together. And, you know, that's that comes with all the experience with hanging out, you know, outside outside the football field and, you know, just down in the classroom and, like, just watching film together, you know, just, you know, working practice and stuff like that. So, you know, all of that, you know, makes us gel together. I really think we're in the corner. I think we have turned the corner. Thank you. Appreciate it. I don't want to get in your show. No, you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. Go ahead. Can I go with you? Go ahead. <laughs> Kamal, I talked to a couple of your teammates. Uh, what do you feel like the culture change? Do you feel like it's sustainable? What do you think P.J. Fleck has brought to that program? Oh, it's, it's 100% sustainable. Uh, Coach Fleck brings a myriad of different ideas and concepts to the culture in Minnesota that you know we need. And it, it's, it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing to have him as a head coach, have him as a mentor, have him as, as, a, as a father figure that some other way. Um, we get to know him on a personal level, and he's truly for the players. So. What do you think that this, the, just the fact that you're here with three teammates, what does that say about golf for football right now? I hope it says a lot. <laughs> I hope it says a lot. Uh, you know, we worked, we worked our butt off to get here. Uh, you know, even though it's a blessing and a, and a, and a dream come true, we truly worked our, our best to get here, especially from being in Minnesota where a lot of people sleep on it. So, You talked just a little bit about Antoine and, and Carter and then uh, Tyler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, starting with Carter, you know, this is my best friend. This is my twin brother. So is Antoine and Tyler. But um, he's the effort, the way he works, um, it's, it's ridiculous. And, you know, we love that kind of energy, guys matching up to that energy and uh, working as hard as Carter. And he's he's a Bobby Yeager. He's he's a he's a John Wick. He's he's a silent killer. Um, you might not you might not see him, but you'll feel him. He's he's definitely he, he puts pressure on you. And then Tyler, 
He's just he's just the best there is when it comes to the receiving. Um, the way he runs his routes, the way he catches the ball at the highest point of contact, um, it's pretty special to watch. So. Linebacker in the league now where you watch and you, you maybe take a little bit from him or you see yourself in his game. In whose game? Anybody's. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, definitely. As I as through my throughout my career, I watched um, Luke Keekley. He was he was he was vicious in the way he approached the game, uh, mentally and physically. You know, he prepares at an extreme rate, and I I do so myself. And I believe that you know I model my game after him. The way he focuses on the little things and details and what. Had a chance to speak to Green Bay. I, I spoke to Green Bay, so how'd that go? It went really well. Um, you know, watch film and whatnot with coach, and, and things went pretty well. Thank you. Yeah. And obviously, they worked on it, and now he's in the draft. And then the Packers also off the board. The player taken, the linebacker Kamal Martin, Daniel. Yeah, Kamal Martin. The first tape popped on was Purdue. He had two picks in that game, so. You know, he, he's very aware, very instinctive. Has his zone dropper in coverage here. Uh, he shoots gaps. They, they line him up, just let shoot gaps and try and penetrate and create negative plays. He did a very nice job with that. But you're drafting him for what he can do in coverage, as well as being able to shoot, cut him loose and let him shoot gaps and make plays.